Welcome to Higher Impact, where we're inspiring and empowering you toward a life of maximum impact. I'm your host, Teresa Hairston. Thanks for tuning in. And as we wind down the year, we realize that we have so much to be thankful for. In the words of the Winans, millions didn't make it, but we're some of the ones who did. Tonight, I'm thrilled and excited to share some great conversations with you. We'll hear from Dr. Leonard Scott, the founder of Ty Scott Records, the oldest Black-owned gospel label in the world. We'll also hear a special message of encouragement from Dr. Will, Bill Winston. But first, let's visit with one of the new kids on the block, so to speak, Mr. Jordan Armstrong. There are so many great, great gifts to the body that are a part of gospel music. I'm honored to talk to a young man, Jordan Armstrong, who is bringing a whole new vibe and sound and feel to the genre. Welcome. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. So Jordan, you've been out here for a minute doing what you do, yes. but you are still a young man. I am. And I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yes, yes, I'm still young and I, I'm glad about it. You know, I think that too, um, and I didn't mean to stop you there, but just, just trying to stay vibrant, stay young is my thing. Uh -huh. I come from the old school. I know I may look young, but I uh -huh. come from the old school, raised by good old grandmothers and yeah. grandfathers. Yes. And so my foundation is very humble, very traditional, but I'm still a young man. I make Where young are you music. From? I'm born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Wow. You know, so I'm down in the boot is where yeah. I was from. And, uh, you know, just, just growing up there was really cool because, you know, I had the best of both worlds. My mom's side is more of the pastors and singers. Mm -hmm. My dad's side is more of the entrepreneur side and pastors as mm -hmm. well. So both of those kind of came together and created mm -hmm. me. And so I'm a church boy, yeah. born and raised in the church, with that church every day, you know, those kind of things. But so. what do you bring to gospel music that is, is the new thing? I think I changed the perspective. I think God gave me a gift to kind of change the, the perspective of what people think gospel music sounds like. So a lot of people my age, a lot of people younger, you know, when we hear gospel, we think about the traditional sound, which mm -hmm. is definitely our foundation, which yeah. is so important that we have that. But there's also new ways and different ways to reach people. And I think that with the gift God has given me, when they hear my sound, they're like, wait a minute, that's gospel? Mm -hmm. That's some good music. Because then, you know, you hear the music, but also you start to hear the message. Mm. And the message is still of Jesus Christ. We just changed the method. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited about the gift God has given me because it's changing people's lives. People are stopping me everywhere and saying, man, you just really changed my mind. You know, you make music that I can listen to on a Tuesday. Yeah. Music I can listen to on a Sunday. Music I can listen to on a Saturday when I'm hanging with my friends. You know, so just giving people a different perspective on what gospel music is, but still keeping the message of Jesus. That's good. Now, were you, were you like setting out to be different? Or did it just happen? It's natural. Okay. It's, look, okay. look, yeah. Folk you just that's, look, Folk that's trying to be different, y'all, yeah. just be yourself. Uh -huh. You know, I, I think that's that was key for me. But I think it's, you know, God gave me this. This is, it's really me. It's purely me. I would do this if, if it was, no, if I was getting nothing in return. Wow. You know, this is really something that I believe God called me to do. And, you know, it's taken a while to get here. I yeah. started in 2009 and 2009, the music scene was totally different. They really didn't want the sound that mm. I was presenting. Mm -hmm. And you know, now it's becoming cool to have a little bit of bounce and you know, the pastor come out yeah. on the service and wear some shades and get with the <laughs> youth choir and dance a little bit. All right. So, All you right. know, I, I love the fact that, you know, the mood is changing now and they're more accepting to what the next generation, uh, the language of the next generation and the feel of the next generation, because now Christians look like me, Yeah. you know? Yeah, well, they always changed. did. We yeah. just didn't. We made them there put on go. a suit. There you go. There you go. <laughs> we wanted yeah, them to absolutely. put on a suit. My grandfather, Lord rest his soul, he would say, you went on TV wearing a, a shirt and a chain and <laughs> glasses. But, you know, things are different now. And yeah. I still love God to the fullest. I'm my just cool. My goodness. <laughs> so who are your musical in influences? Oh, my goodness. Pastor Shirley Caesar. I yeah. saw her today. I almost flipped out. <laughs> That's all I heard growing up in my house was Pastor yeah. Shirley Caesar, especially my grandfather. Um, I definitely enjoyed um, a lot of Al Green's Christian music. My grandfather was so happy when Pastor Al Green put out gospel songs. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I heard that forever too. So that's my old school uh -huh. sound. 
my new school stuff, I'm definitely a big fan of the Marys. Yes. Um, I love Ty, of course, Kirk Franklin. Uh, Canton Jones is one of my good friends. Mm -hmm. He's one of my influences as well. So I'm, I'm kind of a mixing pot of all of that stuff. I'm a gumbo being yeah. from Louisiana. All right. You know, we throw everything <laughs> in there to make my sound. So I know that in the past few years, mm -hmm. we've heard artists like Snoop Dogg yeah. do gospel. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, you know, mainstream folks are getting involved yeah. and we see gospel going different yeah. places. How does that, you know, how does that feel for you? It makes me feel good. I've heard some backlash from different people of different perspectives on how they feel. But I think it's good because I think that now, you know, we've lived a long time where people were saying we were trying to be like the world. Uh -huh. Now the world wants to come into our world. And when they do get here, we should definitely present them with love and tell them thank you. I feel so like we're a doing Kanye, a, good... yeah. a Snoop Dogg, they're it doesn't matter that they're still doing they're other things. They're talking about but Jesus. Yeah. And, you know, we're not here. We, I don't feel that we can decide how much Jesus they can say or how they're living. Yeah. Because I've had some moments where my foundation, I've had some moments where my foundation was shaken, but I still could remember my grandmother, how many times I watched her pray on her knees, bad knees and all, down yeah. on her knees. And sometimes a person like Snoop Dogg, he has foundation in God. Yeah. He may do some things we don't like, mm -hmm. but you know, he still knows who Jesus is. Yeah. And I love the fact of that. And so shout out to Snoop Dogg. He may yeah. be going through some things, but uh -huh. he praised him. Yeah. <laughs> it's Kanye. So where yeah. are you going now? I mean, to, where where is the, the out of the box thing that's next for Jordan? Um, I don't know. Uh, you uh -huh. know, everything I'm doing, I'm not even trying to think outside of the box. A lot of times I just want to inspire someone. I want to yeah. inspire someone that looks like me. I love the fact that I was able to grow up in these terrible neighborhoods in Louisiana and still go to church every Sunday and every day through the week. I didn't know God was molding me to become this like bridge Yeah. because now I know the language of the streets, but I also know how the church functions. I also know how our foundation is built and how to actually speak the language of the youth wow. and, the, and the and the streets today. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's, I think we're going in a good direction. I think as long as, you know, people are called and they're living in their calling. I feel like God has really pushed me and I'm living in my calling. So I'm excited living about the future. Living in your calling, yes. I love it. And what's that latest single? My latest single right now is called My God. My okay? God, yeah. So dope because the song talks about bragging on God. And of course, we've always talked about how good God is. My grandmother always talked about, ain't he good all the time? And all the time, God is good. <laughs> but I wanted to take that same sin and just kind of put a new twist to it with a good beat. Yeah. You know, because that's how you get everybody. You got to have a good beat first. <laughs> then they listen to your lyrics. Yeah. But so, yeah, I wanted to make sure I, I made a song that's just really bragging on God and talking about how awesome he is My to God. me. And hopefully it can inspire someone. So, yeah, man, I need something crazy. Like, it's summertime. I want some fly, something kind of fast, but you know, still swaggy, you know, some luxury. But I want something that's gonna drive people crazy. When I pull up, it's gotta be crazy, man. Like for real. So hopefully you got something for me, man. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, rappers come here all the time, and I don't take crack money, all mm -hmm. right? But you, I see something different. You know, I see the light in the day, all right? So I got something for you, mm -hmm. all right? I saw your Christian Credit Union score. I mean, man, it blew me out. Hey, baby. It blew me out. So I think I got something for you. We can deck it out real nice. Maybe even go with a Bible. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Just a joke. Um, I got something for you. Yeah. Wait a second, let me brag on my God. Get the truth, gave it's showing off. Yeah, I promise he never took a loss. If I'ma tell it, I gotta tell it all. Wait a second, let me brag on my God. He the truth, I ain't just telling y'all. You can count it, he never took a loss. And if I'ma tell it, I gotta tell it all. Hold on, wait a second, let me brag on my. I love my God to keep them bands on me. You may say I'm tripping, I'm your fan all day. I love the time that we be spending low key. And I know they rockin' with me when his hands on me. Oh. Let me brag on my God. He the truth, yeah, he's showing off. Yeah, I promise he never took a loss. If I'ma tell it, I gotta tell it all. Wait a second, let me brag on my God. He the truth, I 
Gospel Today, it was the number one magazine for the urban Christian. You gave everybody an opportunity to really open up the magazine and be proud to say, man, I will never forget Teresa Harrison and everything that she did to make sure that the gospel music industry was presented in a light that was both professional and that was also uh, life-changing for those who would read it. Get the new book that tells this incredible story at BooksToLiveBy.com. Field is not only the center for country music, it is the center for the country's music. And gospel music is in full effect here at the National African American Music Museum. But I am here today with the Impact Network with one of the pioneers and trailblazers who started a label many, many years ago and now is one of the premier leaders in gospel music, Dr. Leonard Scott. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having oh us. Oh my God, it's such an honor. Wow. Yeah. How many years ago did you start your label, Ty Scott? Ah, 1976 was about 40, 45 years. I don't know. I can't count that high. <laughs> <laughs> long time, long time. Before I was born. Huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with that. Dr. Scott, it, what was the vision behind starting a gospel label? Actually, to be truthful, um, we needed a label for our church choir record. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I thought that was the end of it, but God had other uh, ideas and plans. And so uh, here we are 45 years later and, and, and God has done it. Totally God. Wow. Totally God. Well, now 45 years ago, not many people were starting labels. Yeah. What was, the, how did you do that? Because now I think I remember that you're a dentist, but profession. Right, right. Why does a dentist start a gospel label, record label? We, we um, well, I was in music before the Lord saved me, so <laughs> I love music. And okay. Actually, when he saved me, I got out of music because music had actually been my God. Um, mm. You know, you can worship anything. And it was really that, that lifestyle, that, that uh, you know, that whole secular type music thing. So you were in entertainment. Right, right. Were you singing? Uh, singing. I played saxophone. You know, uh -huh. Yeah, so uh, but when God saved me, I, I, I just got out of it altogether. Mm -hmm. and, and after about a year, I felt a release in my spirit and I got in the choir, got into church choir. Uh -huh. And that's when stuff started happening. Um, our church had some problems, like pastor deacon problems, you know. Okay. Ended up being uh -huh. split. Mm -hmm. Well, I went on a fast, a uh, three-day and three-night fast. I got in a hotel room, just me and Bible and a little tape recorder. Uh -huh. So you know how long that was ago. <laughs> <laughs> and at, at the end of that three days, um, the Lord just started giving me songs. I'd never written a song before, but just one after another. I started singing in this little tape recorder. Yes. And uh, I asked the organist what he thought about them. And, and he said, I think we ought to do a record. And so that's how it started. You know, we, we uh -huh. did this record and there was, back then, you know, record companies weren't jumping up and down to sign yes. new artists. Right. And so uh, my attorney said, you know, well, you need to uh, incorporate so that if someone says that you stole their song you know, and they sue you, it, it'll just be incorporated in that uh -huh. entity. So that's how we got started. Wow. You know? And now all these years later, you are the oldest, most widely distributed, most prestigious gospel label in the world. Well, thank you. Yes, I'm saying it right <laughs> here. You. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, th of course, everybody knows one of your biggest artists was John P. Key. Yes, yes. How did you meet John P. Key? That's another story, I'll yeah. tell you. Okay, tell me the quick version. Actually, <laughs> I knew of his music before I met him. Okay. We, we had a guy working for us at that time in Detroit uh, doing uh, a and r and he, I remember he called me on a Saturday morning. I was still in bed. He said, Doc, we got us one, we got us one. And he started playing this cassette tape over the phone. You know? Cassette? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I said, man, I said, okay, and he, he play another one. You know? Yes. And 
I said, man, just sign him, sign him. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah. go back to sleep. You know? And that's that's how. Oh wow. It, you know, and so I. So you gave the go ahead, and you were still sleeping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and John told me later on, the record companies would ask him why didn't he send them that tape. Right. And he said, I did. He said, I sent it to all of y'all. Wow. Everybody, but you know, it, who listens to demo tapes? You know. Right. That, that was a God thing. Yes, just, yes. And so that became one of your biggest breakthroughs in the industry. Yes, yes, it was. It, it was our first uh, really number one. Uh, song number one. Wow. And, yeah. So now in 2021, after all these years, what do you hope is your legacy for gospel music and for your life as a worshiper? Mm. And uh, where are we going from here with gospel music? Oh, gospel music, you know, some people say gospel music is dying. Gospel music will never die. You know, no. the, the gospel will never die. Right. And, and I just see, you know, God using uh, music, because music is just a tool, mm -hmm. and, and I see more people being reached uh, through the gospel. I remember years ago, I was uh, at a program with uh, Edwin Hawkins, and he said uh, he had just got back from Japan, and he said, they love gospel music in Japan. He said, and none of them are Christians. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He said, they just love the music. Mm -hmm. But you know, later on, I got to go to Japan, and uh, I was there one of my sons was in the service so i was there as a in visiting him yes but i i got to uh, go and see a, a choir and and i was with them and i did you know a couple of songs and afterwards a, a young lady came up to me and said that one of the choir members wanted me to lead them to christ wow and i was like blown away and and they didn't speak english and so she had to interpret you know yes. my what i was saying to her wow. and, and so the gospel will reach people through music yeah you know it's, it's, it's a tool yes Very that's cool. amazing and, and when we talk about the evangelism of gospel music i think that you know we're, we're in a t day and a time where music is overtaking message wow yes. in many genres especially gospel you know because our our music is message based yes so how do you see keeping the message pure keeping the message foremost in gospel how do, how does how does your label ensure that that's part of what you do we try of course um, you know sometimes people ask you know well, how do you choose your artist you know and so we try to choose artists that that we can really um, stand behind their ministry mm -hmm. you know that are, that we feel are really reaching people yes. you know with the gospel and and so you know we can do things as a as a family-owned business that maybe some other labels can't who mm -hmm. are governed by boards you know yes. who the bottom line is the bottom line yeah, right. <laughs> and so you know we, we we enjoy having that liberty and this is the bottom line well <laughs> <laughs> i love it praise the lord you know? all right and so you're 47 years in 40, something like that. Something like that. Yeah, this is how is 50 years? How's that 50 year celebration going to look? Oh, wow. You know, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I know I look good and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of getting up there in age now. So, I don't know, 50 years, I'm not sure if I'll be uh, there at, you know. Now, actually, my son actually runs it now. Mm -hmm. I don't actually, Bryant. but I, I still listen to kind Mr. of. Mr. Bryant Scott. Right, right. Yes. I still, you know, listen in, see what's going on. Yes. But, um, and, and they're doing an awesome job too awesome yes, job he's taking it to another whole level yes and one time god told me he spoke to me you know i was getting ready to get on him about something and, and the lord told me to leave him alone he said i've anointed him to do what he's doing and i said yes lord wow so praise god he's a smart guy yeah and yeah. a dedicated young man yeah. you know dr scott we thank you and i speak on behalf of the entire gospel industry for what you've done for not quitting and for taking so many under your wing and allowing them to flourish in this industry. Many people would have thrown them to the side had it not been for you. Wow. So thank you and God bless you. Thank you. We'll be back. Gospel Today, it was the number one magazine for the urban Christian. In the ministry is all patriarchal, it's very misogynistic, we know it's changed now, but Teresa was on the cutting edge all the time. Teresa would be 
classified, I would say, as one of those pioneering matriarchs. Get the new book that tells this incredible story at bookstoliveby.com. What is the message of faith that you can share with others and that you are still living even as you move into this next season? Well, faith in this season, one, one of the things that I said, I said, you know, the believers in the church going, you know, population really needs to, to, to walk by faith and learn what faith is and how to use their faith. Because I believe we're coming into a time where faith is not going to be an option. Faith is going to be a man mandate. Because, you know, right now they're talking about the pandemic and now there's some strains out there and so forth. And so on. I mean, faith is a shield. And so if, if I can develop my faith as a church, then I could stand out among humanity as people who can live above economic crisis, above sickness and pandemics, above, that's what I'm supposed to do. So faith gives me an advantage in life in the last days. So is there a difference between the concept of faith and the reality of the application of faith? Is, is there uh, something that helps us to, to know when to apply it as opposed to just have saying we have it. Okay, well, one of the things that faith requires is love. And you can't walk by faith and hate. You can't do it. And that's for the church. Because what you've got a lot in the world today is a lot of hate. And people are, you know, angry and so forth. That won't work with faith. Faith is designed to work for a king. And when I say that I'm not being a uh, man or woman now, I'm saying it's designed to work for royalty. And, 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 a, and a king or royal or queen, uh, you never hear them shouting and so forth and so on. You just don't see that. And faith is also used to working for God. And God is love. He doesn't have love. He is love. And then faith always takes action, meaning that even though you've heard about faith, you've sung about faith, you've, you've, uh, you've brought up in a family that has a legacy of faith, <clears throat> it always takes a step of faith to let faith work. And look at faith as a servant. And I was in California one time and a guy picked me up. I was still with IBM as a manager and the guy picked me up and he was taking me to the airport. I had to leave the meeting early. Well, he, you know, small chat on the way, but when we got to the airport, I saw I was running a little late. So I, you know, the limo pulled up and I jumped out my side right there on the sidewalk. And he came around, he said, oh, he said, sir, I was gonna get that door for you. I said, what? He said, sir, I was gonna, I thought he was gonna cry because I took away the dignity of him serving me. And you can take the, away the dignity of faith being a servant to you. You, you. you could either try to do it yourself or somehow you feel that faith can't quite do that job. Faith connects you with God. And with God, all things are possible. It doesn't make any difference. We have a huge shopping mall here on 33 acres. Faith did it. We have our home. Faith did it, debt-free. We have our cars. Faith did it, debt-free. One man said it like this. If you come to my house and find anything that didn't come by faith, I want it out. Now, that's walking and living by faith. Last thing. Faith never fails. <laughs> it never fails. Because it connects you with the one who is really behind faith working. And that's God Almighty. But that faith will distinguish you, faith will protect you, faith will promote you and elevate you. I don't care if they don't like you. Well, pastor, you know, they're prejudiced there. I don't think they're going to sell that mall to you. What? <laughs> See, when you've got faith and faith working, faith doesn't care. It just stays in love and just watches God work. So I'm just saying when people have faith, 
Faith is a problem solver. You're not supposed to be wrapped up in these things and getting high blood pressure and all of that. Just put faith to work. Faith is a servant of the believer. Thank you, Pastor Winston. And thank you for joining me tonight. Please connect with me on social media at Dr. T. Hairston or on my website at TeresaHairston.com. Listen, I'll see you back here next week for more Higher Impact. And as we leave you tonight, please enjoy Pastor Donnie McClurkin singing, I Know It Was the Blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, she missed out. Savior's blood, my shepherd. It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood for me. One day when I was lost, she was dead on the cross. And I know. Him in his side, thank you, Jesus. They pierce him in his side, they pierce him in his side for me. See, these young people don't know how to play these songs, but one day when I was lost. He hung his head and died. The Shamandos. He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died. They laid him in a tomb. They laid him in a tomb for me. One day when I was lost.